Hey again, guys. I'm excited. I'm so excited to get this. If you followed my channel for any length of time, you'll understand why I'm so excited to get this. So I got some of these Mag, Mag Pro magnetic holders. My man, Aaron, AD's collection. Turn me on to these. And they are, they're magnetic holders that are similar to PSA size. So if you have what many people call a Frankenstein collection, and you have uh, your graded cards along with your regular cards, uh, they would store a lot more cleanly. But you can, you can label these. And they come with a few different types of labels. I'll show you in a minute. And then, of course, you can make your own. And you can also order labels from them. You can tell them what you want them to say. And I believe you can order them individually, and they're very cheap. And you can label your own cards. Well, I got a bunch of these so that I can finally show my wife my cards. Because one of the labels is for people who sell. And it has a dollar sign on it. And you could just write in there, $3. So it's perfect for me. I got this Tom McDonald. 1957. Someone, uh, somebody on YouTube showed this card recently. And I loved it. So now I have to go and... I have to handwrite three dollars on about two hundred thousand labels, but they have uh, they have these labels if you want to handwrite, and I'm sure you could use a label maker. I I have to experiment with it and see what I could do, but these these are kind of cool uh, because you know when you when you have both graded and regular cards and you're going through your boxes and everything, you know it's nice to have it a little closer to the same size there. I just thought I'd share that with you for anybody who uh, might be interested in getting these things. MagPro Zion. Sold by Zion cases. My man Rick over at Vintage Eyeball Cards, he has all kind of Zion cases. He has those, uh, those flamingo cases he carries around to the show and uh, tries to sell cards to people. I got this fabulous card. This card is so beautiful. And when I when I look at this card, and you know, I'm not a big high graded junkie, right? Um, <laughs> when it comes to vintage cards, I, I really don't care. Uh, but this is just a perfect example of it. This card is so beautiful. So beautiful. 71, 72, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I want you to look at this baby. What's the grade on that? What did they assign that? 4.5. I mean, look how beautiful that card is. I mean, to me, it's to me, and this is just to me. I'm not putting anybody down. Everybody does their own thing. But to pay like two or three thousand dollars more for a nine or something, it just seems ridiculous to me. It seems like a waste of money. This card is so beautiful. I think of all the other cards I could get with that. Just a beauty. And now I find beauty in cards and sets that many other people don't. But I still have that old set collector in me. And there are a number of old sets that I still work on. I work on slowly, I'll grab them when I see them kind of thing. If I'm at a show or the national, whatever. And one of these more quirky sets is the 1927 W560. And if you watch my channel, again, uh, you've, you've seen me show a lot of these. And uh, anyway, I picked up the Mickey Cochran and it has another quirky background here. These are. These are playing cards, but some of them have different 
things. I don't even know what to call them. Some are joker jokers and some just have other types of characters on here. This looks like a, like an old maid from the old maid game, if you remember those. So I don't know what that is intended to be. But Mickey Cochran, man. And I don't think he gets enough baseball or hobby love, to be honest with you. A great catcher from the era. I mean, you know he had to be good if Mickey Mantle was named after him, right? And, of course, these are blank back. But, uh, you know, um, there was a fellow YouTuber uh, who reached out to me. And he was asking me um, about which card was Jimmy Fox's rookie card. You know, what I considered his rookie card to be. And the thing is, is, you know, with the rookie card rules, who knows? I think with the rookie card rules, uh, most people consider the 33 Gaudi, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, but I have the Jimmy Fox in this set. And this is from 1927. And that would be his first card. However, uh, he was also included in a 1925 to 31 exhibit set. And I don't know if anybody out here, anybody on here uh, knows if there is a way to specifically date those. Because they were from 1925 to 1931, meaning that if he was on, you know, one up until 27, that would be his first card also. But I don't know that. He could have been on in 1928, 29, 30, 31. So the W570, I believe, is his very first card, other than the possibility of that exhibit card. And if I'm off base on that, anybody has any insight to that, please, please let me know in the comments. Now, back when I was uh, in my 20s, and I was, I was flying all over the world. I, um, I used to go around and do marketing seminars and stuff, and I would travel about every three weeks, and I would go on these long flights over to the Middle East and to Africa and to Europe and to Asia, and I would be on these flights for hours on end, and they would always show uh, more world kind of news. And while I was on there, there was a, a soccer player who they they would always show. He was always he was always in the highlights, just making you know amazing plays and shooting amazing goals. And uh, so I got to know his name, even though I didn't really follow soccer, just from being on these flights and seeing him on every single flight. And that was the original Ronaldo. And I picked up this awesome patch card of his. I don't hear many people talk about him uh, too often anymore. But a great soccer player. A great football player. So that's what I have for you. Man, I'm going to get Carpel's Tunnel filling out all these $3, $3 labels. But then I could show my wife my collection. Thanks for hanging out with me.